Welcome to Programming for Designers. This is Trish Ladd, WIP 400 Platt College. My SQL update. In this video, we're going to start with the update command, and it does exactly what it sounds like it does. It updates data in our database. Now, how do we do that? Well, this is what it looks like. Basically, we say update this table and set the value of this field to whatever value we want it to have. Any fields that we want to have have updated value, then we just set them exactly like that, where a specific condition exists. The where clause or where phrase is very important because if we do not use it, the values will be set to the same value for all of the records in the data of the table or tables that we are manipulating. So we can use the affected rows property to retrieve the number of records updated. Affected rows works not only for the insertion or the deletion of data, but for updating as well. But affected rows only returns true if any changes were made. So if you update a field with the same information that was previously there, the database will not register a change. Therefore, no rows of data were affected. This is an important thing to know because if we are expecting an affected row result, we must keep in mind that if the data has not changed, no rows are affected no matter how many times you update the field with the same data. The change in value is what makes the distinction. When we add a row, one row of data is affected because it's new. When we delete a row of data, one row of data is affected because one row was removed from the database. When we update, the only way a row of data is affected is if the values of data are different. Additionally, it is important to make sure that any updates happen before the data is output to the page. Otherwise, the user will see old data and it'll look like their changes did not go through and then they will just get frustrated. So how do we affect an update? The best way to do it is to create a form that displays the current data in the database. Then we allow the user to make changes to that information in a similar manner to how we would let them insert new data. We would still need to parse, clean, and sanitize the data before sending it to the database, and through our parser we can do that. In the parser we would write an update statement rather than an insert statement, and you can see that on the following page. Like most parsers, we have to have this at the top of our page, so the update is performed before the select that would output the data is called into our form. That way the user only sees the current data from the database and not old, stale data. In summary, update statements allow us to change field data. We can update more or one tables at a time. We must focus our changes with the where phrase or all the records in the tables that we wish to affect will be updated with the same exact information. And in order to have the user to be able to see the change that they just made, make sure that the update is done and then the select is used to read the data that was just set. Delete statements. We just went through update and now we're going to talk about delete. The delete statement is pretty straightforward. Like the update statement, make sure you use the where phrase or all of your records could be deleted. Here are some additional examples. We can also use the affected rows function to retrieve the number of records deleted. Deletion is permanent. It destroys rows of data. Only use it if you want the row of data to disappear forever and otherwise you're going to want to use update. Use delete with caution. So delete statements allow us to destroy records of data. We can delete rows from one or more table at a time. We must focus our deletes with the where phrase or all of the records in the table will be deleted. And affected rows tells us how many records were deleted. As always, I hope that this lecture was helpful and informative, and I wish you happy coding.